What is the best cloud storage service to use in 2022? Welcome back to this year's version of What's the Tech, where we answer your tech questions and follow up on last year's version, where we are looking at the best cloud storage services to use this year. So if you're wondering which cloud storage service you should be signing up for, we're going to be looking at Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud, pCloud, iDrive, or Sync. Then we'll be answering that exact question right now. Now, a quick thank you to Roboform for sponsoring this video. More on them a little bit later. But otherwise, none of the cloud storage services in this video are paying me to say good or bad stuff about them. I've signed up, used, and paid for all of these services myself over the last few months of testing. And so these are my honest opinions of using them. Firstly, and if you're new here, then hi, my name is Pete, and I ran my own IT business for the last decade until I sold it recently in 2020. And on this channel, we review the best cloud services from password managers to cloud storage and VPNs, as well as review some of the latest tech. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, please do consider subscribing. That'll be hugely appreciated. Now, whilst you are watching, make sure you let us know which cloud storage services you are considering, or perhaps which ones you're using right now. Let me know if I've missed one that you'd like to see in the next review. And if you have any questions whatsoever, honestly, no question is too small or too large, then I will do my very best to respond to each and every single comment you leave down below this video. Otherwise, there is a huge amount to get through. So let's get straight to today's video. Now, for each of these services, we are gonna be looking at Features, user experience, transfer speeds, backup and retention, and pricing. And I'll try to summarize these as we go. And these are services that you can use to store your files and folders, videos, documents, and across, you know, Mac, Windows, mobile devices. Now, we'll also be making a separate video shortly about the best storage to use, specifically store your phone's camera roll for pictures and videos. So subscribe if you want to see that one. And I'll also leave some links down below here where you can sign up for each of these services. Now, some of them may be affiliate links, yes. And hopefully some of them will also give you a good discount of some form for using them too. So it really helps support the channel and helps me make more of these videos. So uh, yeah, thank you if you choose to use one of those to sign up. So after you've hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, let's talk about the first contender today. And that is iDrive. With iDrive, you can upload files of up to 10 gig in size, which is suitable for most people, except perhaps those with large video files. Now, iDrive also makes use of block level syncing, which means if you are editing larger files, only the changes of those files will then need to be uploaded rather than uploading the entire file again. And generally it makes for a snappier overall experience. But with that said, you don't get the, um, I guess Microsoft's terminology works best here, the files on demand feature where you can view and browse your files online, but as if they were stored on your actual computer locally and then only down them when you need them. Now you don't get that with iDrive. So you'll need to ensure you have as much storage space locally on your computer than you do in the cloud. Now they do also have a feature called selective sync to only sync specific folders to your machine, which can kind of work around that. But with that said, when uploading files to iDrive, it maxed out my upload speeds of around 150 megabits per second. So the upload speed incredibly fast. Now iDrive also stores up to 30 previous versions for all files. So if you have any issues, you can easily restore back from iDrive drive and those versions don't take up any space inside the space that you've purchased. Pricing wise and for just $59.52 per year, very exact price, you can get up to five terabytes of space or 74.62 for 10 terabytes with iDrive and covering unlimited computers there. Now they're also running a special offer at the time of filming this video to get 90% off by using the link down below in the description of this video and you have to be switching from a paid for plan of either Dropbox, Google and a few other services where you can pay just $7.95 for the whole year for five terabytes for space, insanely well-priced. And well, if you don't have a Dropbox or a Google account, I guess you could sign up for one month. That gives you the proof that you need to show them that you got that deal. So um, yeah, I didn't say that. I shouldn't have said that. Outside of their pay for plans, you can also get five gig for free. And I was genuinely surprised at iDrive to begin with. And it's a very, very solid offer. I mean, given the $7.95 for a whole year for five terabytes of space. So be sure to use that link down below if that's the one for you. Now, let's look at Google. Google Drive's features are bundled into their Google One subscription, which in addition to cloud storage, you can also get up to 10% back on purchases in the Google Store. You can upload files of up to five terabytes in size, which I mean, that's crazy anyway. And there's a max cap of 750 gig uploaded per day. No abilities to do block level syncing, unfortunately, but they do encourage you to edit using their web-based tools instead. So you're not really editing directly on your machine. Now back to that files on demand feature, Google does that. So you can sync terabytes of data up to Google, even if you have a much smaller hard disk on your 
local computer. And just like iDrive, the upload speeds are incredibly fast, fast enough to max out my upload bandwidth. So there are no issues there. And also since this is an online system, the download speeds, well, being Google, they're equally impressive. I have a gigabit connection here. So one gig down and it's meant to be 120 up, but I sometimes get more like 150 up. And Google devoured that full one gig connection when downloading even larger files from Google Drive. So again, there is no issues there. User experience all around is pretty good. I mean, Google is so embedded into pretty much everything nowadays. So it doesn't matter what application you're using or operating system or, or even mobile phones or tablets, you'll be able to rely on Google Drive being integrated very, very well to it. Now, Google doesn't back up any of its data and it's recommended that you use another service to do so, but it has a trash folder which keeps for up to 30 days. And beyond that, there is a period of another, I think it's 25 days where Google may be able to recover them. Now it looks like Google also keeps up to 100 versions of those within those 30 days so you can revert back, but there's no actual information publicly available here. And it's likely that these will be limited to only Google document kind of file types. Pricing wise, it is very difficult to compare with the likes of iDrive, but you do get 15 gig for free, 100 gig for 199 per month, 200 gig for 299 per month, and two terabytes for 999 per month. And if you are concerned about security at all when looking at all of these cloud services, then something you might want to consider is a solid password manager. Oh look, our sponsor. Roboform is a password manager and form filler that has been around since 2000. Yes, 2000. It allows you to store, manage, and generate your passwords from across the internet in one central place. So you'll never forget a password again. Plus it's desktop and mobile friendly. Data is encrypted and decrypted locally, and you can protect access to your most prized possessions by using Roboform's in-application 2FA to make sure you're staying safe. Now, Roboform can also store unlimited items and capture as you go whilst browsing around the internet with features like offline access if you get cut off at any time, extensions for all the major browsers, and the ability to easily import from those same browsers and other password managers. It's a great option. And at the end of the day, if you're not using a password manager, then well, you should be. So use the link down below and get 30% off of Roboform everywhere, which brings it down to just $16. And get yourself started using a password manager today. So uh, thanks Roboform for sponsoring this part of the video. And with that said, let's get back to the video. So moving on, now let's take a look at Dropbox. Dropbox lets you upload files of up to 250 gig in size, so no issues there. Dropbox also makes use of block level syncing, so only changes to larger files need to be re-uploaded rather than uploading like the entire file again. And for the upload speeds, again, they are really, like really, really good. 170 meg. I'm absolutely loving these upload speeds so far. And yes, Dropbox also has the really cool feature that they're calling Smart Sync, which only lets you keep files online as well as syncing them locally if you choose to. So if you store a lot of data that you need to access from multiple machines that don't actually have that amount of space locally on them, then something like Google Drive or Dropbox will work really, really well for you. Download speeds for Dropbox also maxed out my bandwidth and hit full gigabit speeds so fast that it took like a second or two to download a two gig video file. Incredible incredibly fast. For user experience and I guess like Google, the interface is, I mean, it's time proven and it integrates with pretty much everything that you'll ever need. Something that also is good to see is that Dropbox also has a full 30 day file recovery and version history with an account rewind feature that if your account ever gets hacked or if you catch a virus or hit with ransomware, you could set your account back to just before that happens to just quickly get back to your files again. Now, when it comes to pricing, Dropbox offers two gig for free, two terabytes for 9.99 per month, and two terabytes for a family for 16.99 per month shared across six users. Now, over to pCloud. pCloud is an interesting offer which mirrors many features from other storage providers. There are also no size limits on the size of files you can upload and it supports block level syncing. So when you edit large files, they'll be quickly re-uploaded. They're also based in Switzerland and so the stricter kind of Swiss law applies here, which means good things for your security. pCloud also offers additional add-ons such as pCloud encryption, though it's also called pCloud crypto in this documentation, which is a little bit confusing, but that gives you zero knowledge encryption across your files on any device. And the user experience with pCloud is, I mean, it's actually pretty good. It's not as widely popular as the big names, of course, like Google and Dropbox, but the apps, they're pretty solid. And there seems to be no issues with speed of use. You know, upload speeds are good. Again, they maxed out my upload bandwidth of around 150 megaseconds. And there is also an online mode, which they call virtual drive. However, using pCloud as a virtual drive, at least on a newer M1 Mac, requires you to do some pretty in-depth stuff. If you're, a, you know, certainly if you're a non-techie, you need to restart your Mac into recovery mode. And 
I think that's just where I'm going to stop because you shouldn't need to do that. It's fine over in Windows world, but if it's an M1 Mac and you want this feature, I would probably avoid it unless you're comfortable booting into recovery mode. You get 30 days of history and versioning, and there's also a rewind feature similar to that of Dropbox, where you can restore your whole account to a specific point in time. PCloud also offer the ability to extend older versions up to one year with their extended file history service, which is an additional cost. Pricing wise, PCloud offer 10 gig for free, 500 gig for $49.99 per year, or two terabytes for $99.99 per year. But they also offer a lifetime plan for these, which is something unique to PCloud, $175 for 500 gig and $350 for two terabytes. One-off payments for life. Now at the time of making this video, they've also got an offer for you for Valentine's Day, which gives you 75% off, which gives you 500 gig for 122.50, two terabytes for $245 and four terabytes for $490. I mean, factoring in that these prices are like a pay once and that's it, those are very strong prices. Now let's take a look at another new entry for this year, Sync. <music> Like others we've tested, Sync has no file size limits, though it does actually advise against uploading anything over 40 gig, as that can give you slower performance apparently. You can connect up to five devices to your account, so maybe laptop, desktop, phone, tablet, TV. Now, unlike some of the others we've tested, like Dropbox and Google Drive, Sync can't run online only. So you're gonna need enough local storage space as you do in the cloud. Now, there is a way around this where you can use selective sync or you can send items to the vault, which you can still access via the web or, or via mobile devices, but not through that kind of easily accessible folder that you're used to. Also, note that it says online that there is a 40 megabits per second per thread cap on transfer speeds. With my own testing though, it wasn't as fast as some of the others we've tested, but it wasn't capped at 40 meg either. I, I think I hit up to 60 to 90 meg throughout, so not quite sure what's going on there. But to be honest, if you do run with their numbers, and as they've shown on the website, a one gig file should take less than five minutes to download. I mean, which is pretty sucky if you've got like a 20 gig video file to download, since that will take you over an hour and a half, even if like me, you have gigabit speeds. So whilst I wasn't capped to those speeds, and since that's what they're advertising, I wouldn't expect to get anywhere with them if you aren't seeing those same speeds that I'm seeing here. You'll also get up to 365 days of version history, which is one of the best I've seen across all of these other offerings. And they also offer the account rewind feature that we've seen elsewhere too. Though there's no actual timescales on this, so I would assume that's also 365 days since that's where they've got the version history up to. Now pricing is where Sync really, really ups their game. There's five gig for free, you've got two terabytes for eight dollars per month and six terabytes for twenty dollars per month but they are the first one that i've seen do this for a a very very long time now if you upgrade to their teams unlimited at 15 dollars per user per month with a two user minimum you can have unlimited cloud storage for 30 dollars per month so if you are looking for a service with unlimited storage then pcloud is basically the one to check out for most people now the only other option for unlimited storage is google's enterprise offering which will cost you about the same but it is more difficult to kind of figure out since it's a, a business service but with that said be aware of the cap on transfer speeds with sync.com if you want to transfer large files. Next up, iCloud. It wouldn't be a cloud storage comparison without Apple's iCloud, now rebranded as iCloud Plus. So iCloud Plus comes with more than just storage. And of course, it is part of the whole Apple ecosystem. And so for user experience, if you are using only Apple devices, then well, it obviously wins here. It's integrated down to the operating system level across all Apple devices, laptops, desktops, iPads, phones, just everything. Storage can be used for data, but also photos, videos, backing up your Apple devices, iMessages, and all the other sorts of things as well in the Apple kind of world. Upload speeds, also great. It maxed out my connection and it has that same ability to store files online only. And going back to that upload experience, you can actually see they've even integrated showing you more data around those uploads on the operating system. You can see the size going down as it's uploading and you can see the stats down the bottom too. Not something you get with any other cloud storage provider. And again, to download, this was really fast and it maxed out my gigabit connection as you'd expect, of course, from someone like Apple. But there's always a but, but Backups and retention is kind of where Apple falls down though. It looks like Apple will give you 30 days of retention on your data, though there's no actual like solid information I can find online to confirm any of this. And version history information, 
seems to be pretty much hit and miss. The best I can see is when using a local Time Machine backup where you can back up and restore with version history, but that's a local backup and not part of the iCloud service. So anyway, pricing wise is 99 cents for 50 gig, 2.99 for 200 gig and two terabytes for 9.99. And to be honest, Apple storage isn't something I would recommend for anybody really. By all means, it's a great way to back up your camera roll or for those of you who are completely and 100% in the Apple ecosystem, but step outside of an Apple device and iCloud becomes much more complicated to use. And so I wouldn't really recommend it to most people, like I said. So with that said, let's now take a look at the other monster when it comes to cloud storage and cloud services in general, Microsoft OneDrive. <laughs> OneDrive offers the ability to store files up to 250 gig in size, which is more than enough for most people. And like Google Drive, when you subscribe, you're getting more than just storage space. Now, depending on the tier you sign up for, you'll also get apps like Outlook, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And like Google Drive, again, OneDrive integrates with pretty much everything. Now, of course, particularly with the Microsoft suite of applications like Word and Excel, PowerPoint, and right down to the desktop operating system level, you also get the files on demand feature, which lets you access all of your files locally as if they were stored there without actually needing all of the disk space to store them locally. So that's a great plus there. Also upload speeds, great. Download speeds, great. No issues at all, just speed. With OneDrive, you get a 30 day retention period with the option to restore to a specific point in time from like a massive deletion or corruption issue, and also some advanced ransomware and malware detection. And pricing wise, it starts from free for five gig, 199 per month for hundred gig, or 59.99 per year for one terabyte. Phew. So with all of that said, which ones would I recommend of all these providers? And don't forget that I'll also include links down below to sign up for each one. So if you are kind enough to use one of those links, thank you. Now, honestly, I thought when I was reviewing these ones that I would at least find one or two bad eggs with like crap security, bad transfer speeds, and just unusable clients. But I didn't, they're, they're all pretty good. Now, if you want the absolute cheapest, then I drive hands down 100% is the winner. Five terabytes of space for $7.95 for a whole year? Insane value. With that aside, all of the other providers are pretty much on par in terms of just pure pricing. Now for unlimited storage, then of course, sync.com is your only real option, incredible value. If you're in the Google, Microsoft or Apple ecosystem already using their phones or computers or apps, then it would make sense for you to stick with these as also for your you know, cloud storage. pCloud has some great data sovereignty and zero knowledge security and it's fast too. And if you want a good reliable cloud service that backs up the data and then gives you some great retention and like rollback features, then it's Dropbox. For me, I'm using Google Drive for most of my documents iDrive as a backup and iCloud for my phone camera roll. Thanks again to Roboform for sponsoring this video. Use the link down below to sign up if you haven't already. Next up, go and watch these other videos that you might find interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.